Hi everyone, Andrew here. Are you thinking about buying a professional football slash soccer ball? Want to know the differences between the most popular match balls? Are you not sure which brand to buy? Do you want something that fits your needs and budget? Then this video is for you. If you're interested in a particular ball but don't want to watch the whole video, you can go to the description and skip to that brand. There are also reviews on my YouTube channel where I review one match ball at a time. That is more in depth. So last summer I attempted to make the most comprehensive review of official match balls on YouTube. At that time I did not have the resources necessary to make a high quality video. So this summer I decided to rent a camera and show these bad boys in action with a good goalkeeper. There will be different types of shots, passes and crosses. Our first match ball is the well-known 2018 World Cup Adidas Telstar. It is very similar to the previous generation six panel ball called Brazuca. It has a boring pixelated graphic that is inspired by an old retro black and white design. It's made out of six panels that are bonded together. The bladder is glued to the carcass unlike most match balls where you can detach the bladder easily. Here is a video that I got from the What's Inside YouTube channel. I expected that Adidas would have made more changes in four years which to me is a long time. I don't see many differences between this ball and the Brazuca. That is not to say it's a bad match ball. It is a great option for both professionals and amateurs. It is light, fast and has just the right amount of padding. During shooting practice and games, it felt accurate and easy to control. If you put a lot of power, this ball can move in the air and become deceiving. Proof of this, is Griezmann's goal against Uruguay. Many say that this was a goalkeeping mistake, but in my opinion, it also has to do with how the ball moved in the air. In conclusion, I'd recommend this ball, especially if you can find it at a good price. The second match ball on my list is the Adidas Finale, also known as the Champions League ball, and is somewhat similar to the Adidas Telstar. If I were to compare the two, I would say that the Champions League ball is a much better option. It has a cool star design that is similar to the Champions League logo. The ball hasn't changed for years, which in my opinion is not a bad thing. If it ain't broken, why fix it? It's made out of 32 panels that are bonded together. The only thing that I'm not a big fan of is the stars. Um, they have a different grip compared to the rest of the ball. Nothing that affects performance. This is one of the most accurate match balls that I've ever owned. It feels very round and well balanced. It is good if you want the perfect cross or you want to place the ball with the inside of your foot. In conclusion, if you want a ball that has bonded panels and you're afraid that it will lack accuracy, then this would be good instead. I would highly recommend it. It is one of my favorites and I see why Adidas does not want to change it. The third ball on the list is the brand new Nike Merlin. It's made out of just four panels. That's the smallest number of panels that I've ever seen on a match ball. As far as I know, it comes in five colorways and it is used in leagues such as the Premier League, La Liga and Serie A. Here I have the very first colorway. Interesting graphic that look more like an evolution from the previous model, Autumn 5. Except for the number of panels, this ball doesn't feel too much different from its predecessor. What makes this ball interesting is its construction. The bladder is wrapped in a cloth-like material. Then, the panels are bonded from underneath using something that looks like a tape. Another thing I like about this ball is the sound it makes when you strike it. It sounds very satisfying. It has this pingy sensation. It doesn't have much padding and this doesn't bother me personally, but other people have complained to me about it. Now in terms of feel and performance, I think that this ball is fun to play with. It is in my opinion more suited for professional players. Very good if your team has a possession oriented style good for fast passes and crosses. Even though it doesn't feel like the most rounded match ball, 
the aero track grooves make, it, make the flight more consistent at fast speeds. In conclusion, this is a decent matchbook. It is amazing how efficient technology has become. Stitching a bow by hand can take hours. I would not recommend it for amateurs because of the padding. If you really want a Nike match bowl, I highly recommend that you go on eBay and look for the Nike Insight, which in my opinion is the best match bowl ever made. The Insight has just the right amount of padding, is not too hard, not too soft. The classic hand stitch 32 panel construction, which makes it very reliable and the grip, which is also not too slippery, but not too sticky either. Um, get it while it's still cheap because in the next few years, it'll become a lot more expensive. Our next bowl is the Derby Star Brillant APS. Even though it's written Derby Star on it, this is a Camouflage Select Brillant Super FIFA 2018. The Bundesliga version is for now only available in white. The select bowl that I just mentioned also has a winter version in yellow. This bowl will be used in the USL next season, an American soccer league below the MLS. As you can see, this bowl has the classic hand stitch 32 panel construction. As I said in my previous videos, this is in my opinion the best design available right now. The bowl's trajectory is consistent and shots are very accurate. The graphic is black and gray with some red accents. The corners of the panels have the classic select design. One thing to keep in mind is that this bowl is a bit different from last year's Derby Star models. There is no more smooth finish with a 3D snakeskin effect. Now you have this dimple texture kind of like a golf ball. One interesting thing is that the Dutch 1st and 2nd division also known as Eredivisie uses the same bowl as last year but with a new graphic. I expected Derby Star to have the same bowl in all of their leagues they sponsor. Another thing to keep in mind is that this bowl is a lot different from the Select Brilliant Super TB. The guys at Unisport say that these two match bowls are very similar. The Thermobondi Select Bowl has a lot more padding and feels a bit lighter. I guess they need a stronger materials in order to stitch the panels. Now in terms of feel and performance, this bowl feels a bit heavier than the old Brilliant APS. This bowl is very reliable and goes where you want it to go. It can also travel long distances unlike the Select Brilliant TB and most other Adidas bowls. So goal kicks should not be a problem for goalkeepers. If I were to compare it to another bowl, it would be somewhat similar to the Under Armour Desafio. Although the Derby Star Bowl feels a bit faster. My only complaint is the grip. I feel that dimple textures in general lack grip. Not a big deal at all if you only play on dry artificial grass. Sometimes less grip is good because too much grip can make the ball get stuck between your foot and the ground. On the other hand, if you play on wet surfaces, you might find this ball hard to control. The padding is a bit stiff compared to the average ball. The Select Brilliant TB is a lot softer, even though the texture looks identical. The padding is okay if you like the Nike Autumn or Merlin. In conclusion, this is a great option if you want a ball that is reliable and performs well. Except for Void Lumo and Under Armour Desafio, this is the only 32 panel hand stitch ball that is used in a big league nowadays. All the other big leagues use thermo bonded match balls. Next, we have the Under Armour Desafio. Under Armour does not sell it on its website anymore. As of right now, it's available on Amazon with the NASL graphic for just 40 US dollars with free shipping. In my opinion, this is a steal. Another place where you could find it for a much higher price of $140 is Dick's Sporting Goods website. I have honestly never seen such a difference in price anywhere else. When I bought mine, I paid 80 US dollars, which at that time was not bad. The NSL Soccer League is suspended for an unknown number of seasons. 
As of right now, I don't know any professional league that uses this match ball. Kind of sad because in my opinion, this is one of the best match balls out there. In terms of design, this ball looks classic and modern at the same time. It has a classic hand stitched 32 panel construction with a graphic which is made of red, black and blue arrowheads. I think it looks very modern. It's also visible at high speeds. In terms of feel and performance, this ball feels solid and reliable. You can take long goal kicks easily. I was able to kick it over 60 yards so many times because of its good amount of padding and uniform grip that prevents slippage your foot connects really well with the ball making it possible to take those very long distance shots the ball feels a bit heavy i guess that's one of the reasons it picks up so much speed shots and passes feel very accurate also i really have nothing to complain about this ball other than i wish it was a bit lighter and it had less padding. I'd recommend this ball to both amateurs and professionals. You can never go wrong with something like this. I hope that Under Armour will keep making hand stitched 32 panel balls for a long time. I'll be disappointed to see them move to thermal bonded match balls. Next, we have two British brands. I'll start with the Mitra Delta Legend. As far as I know, this ball is used in the England's football leagues, below the Premier League, the EFL Cup, the Scottish and Welsh Premier Leagues. It comes in different colors depending on the competition it's used in. Here I have the English Football League graphic. Very cool design. This ball looks and feels identical to the last year's model. You have two types of panels, triangles and diamonds that are both bonded and stitched by a technology called Hyperseam. It's got a good amount of padding and grip made out of little dots. This ball can go very long distances. One thing to mention is that it feels a bit heavier than the Adidas Finale and Nike Ordem. Overall, this is a fun and reliable ball. I'd recommend it to both amateurs and professionals. After using this ball for almost a year, I noticed that it's a bit more durable than the model that Mitra made two years ago. You can still buy it, this old model on eBay. I'll post links in the description. Also, the current model doesn't go as far. If I were to choose between this two-year-old model and the current one, I'll go for the older one simply because it can travel a lot longer in the air and it feels a bit quicker. I guess those grooves and the more durable material take away from the speed and unpredictability. In conclusion, this is still a good match ball. I would recommend this if you want a lot of padding. There are other options at this price, but if you decide to buy it, you won't be making a bad choice. The second British brand that I have here is the Umbro Neo Professional. Compared to the other popular match balls out there, this one comes at a relatively lower price, especially if you are getting an older model. The Neo Professional is used in the League of Ireland and some of the lower leagues in the UK. It comes in few colors depending on the competition that it's used in. I got the green one because it was on sale. It has a really cool design made out of three types of hand stitched panels that remind me of the leaves of a plant. And the valve is very easy to find. It's made out of Tasian, Tasian fiber and it has hexagonal dimples for grip. Now in terms of feel and performance, this ball feels like a cheaper version of the Mitra Delta. I really like that it goes very far in goal kicks and long shot. I can easily kick it over 60 yards. You can add a bit of bend, you can blast it without too much knuckle. I feel that with this match ball you get a lot for the price. I don't think that there are many brands that offer this type of quality for under $80. The only negative is the lack of padding. The surface is really hard and feels a bit heavy. I guess heaviness is something British since Mitre, a British brand, is also heavy. At least Mitre balls are a lot more padded which makes up for its heaviness. 
I'd recommend this for professionals that are on a budget. The lack of padding makes it less suitable for amateur leagues. Next, we have the Puma Final Statement 1. It was recently used in the 2018 International Champions Cup that Tottenham just won. At the moment, it's available in two colorways. White Lemon Tonic in black, which is the one that I have, and the white, blue and black that has the Italian crest. I really like the graphic on this ball. It looks very futuristic and you have the impression that it's glowing. It's made out of 18 panels that are bonded together. There are three types of panels. Two of the panels have the shape of a circle that have the Puma logo. The smallest logo has the valve in the middle. It has a dimple texture and a decent amount of padding. I have tested this ball in a shooting practice and in an indoor league game where I happened to score 4 goals. I could not find anything to complain about it yet. The padding is not too soft but not too hard either. Definitely harder than the Mitra Delta Legend. The trajectory of the shots I took seemed to be very similar to the other FIFA Pro match balls. Overall, it's a round and responsive ball. I really enjoyed using it for my games. The only thing that might be a concern is that it feels a bit heavy. It's definitely not as light as the Adidas Finale or Telstar, but not as heavy as the Mitra Delta Legend. In conclusion, this is a great option if you want to be different and have a cool looking ball. Puma has improved a lot from the last generation of match balls. Next, we have the UHL Sport Infinity Series Revolution 3.0. I got this for $75 from a Spain based website called Go In. Reasonably priced, I would say. This ball is now being used in the first league in France, League On, under the name of Elysia. Here I have the Northern Ireland Football League model. It has a 22 panel construction, two types of panels, big pentagons and smaller bone shaped ones. The grip is very shallow, more like a 3D print. In terms of how this feels and performs, there's no major complaints other than durability. The generic model had one of the big panels come off at one corner. Luckily I was able to glue it back with shoe glue and it stayed in place ever since. The flight is fairly accurate. The padding is softer than the Adidas Finale, but a bit stiffer than the Mitra Delta Legend. There's not much to complain in terms of performance. It feels like most FIFA Pro match balls. If I were to compare it to another match ball, it would be very similar to the Puma Final Statement 1. I would recommend it for both professionals and amateurs. Next, we have the Wilson NCAA Forte Fiber 2. As the name suggests, this ball is used in the United States college soccer. A little bit about the brand. Wilson makes the NFL football called the Duke. One interesting fact about this match ball is that it comes in three colors. You almost never see Adidas and Nike have two winter colors nowadays. This ball is available in orange, yellow and white. I really like the design on this ball. It reminds me of the movie Tron Legacy. It's made out of two types of panels that are bonded. There are 20 panels in total. You have these really cool triangles in red, orange, royal blue and black. The grip is another thing that makes this ball very unique. It's, it is very similar to sandpaper and you have the impression that you have an even better grip when it's wet. Probably one of my favorite types of grips on a match ball. Now in terms of how it performs and feels, this ball seems to be very fast in the air. The weight and padding is very similar to the one on the Adidas Telstar and Finale. I used this ball in two indoor games and a shooting practice. Overall, it's a round and responsive ball. I didn't seem to find any issues with it. It's very similar to the other FIFA Pro match balls I own. One thing that I'm concerned about is durability. During one of the two indoor games, someone stepped on this ball and left a few cuts. It's nothing serious that affects performance, but most of the match balls that I own have a strong outer layer that doesn't get cut easily. The only other ball that got cuts is the Mitra Delta Legend, which unlike the Wilson ball is only meant to be used in, on natural grass. 
In conclusion, this is an excellent match pool if you want to be different and still have something that performs really well. I'd recommend it to both amateurs and professionals. Next, we have the New Balance Furon Destroy. It comes in two colors, white and pink. The pink one is the winter version, which I am reviewing. It's made out of two types of panels, which are very different in shape. It has a total of 18 panels that are hand stitched together. The graphic is very simple, nothing too fancy about it. Long story short, I expected a lot more from a big brand like New Balance. They sponsor Liverpool, one of the biggest teams in England and Europe. This is by far the worst match pool in my entire collection. At some point, I was asking myself, is it worth spending time reviewing this? But then I feel that I should review it just because New Balance is a very popular brand, especially with running shoes. Unfortunately, they don't make the best products when it comes to soccer slash football. Now, going back to the match ball review, I asked myself, how did this ball even get FIFA Pro certified? The way it bounces is very inconsistent, there is very little padding and grip. The grip is terrible. I used this ball for one of my indoor games and there were times when I miskicked kicked it completely. There were times when I just could not stop the ball from rolling, which made my team give up possession. It looks lame to blame a ball for your performance, but this is one of those products that you should completely stay away from if you care about performance. Even though this ball costs $65 on most websites, it performs like a $10 ball from an unknown brand. Almost everything about a FIFA Pro match ball is missing. There is very little padding, the grip doesn't work, and its trajectory is very unpredictable, especially in long distance shots. The only two good things about this ball that I could think of is its durability and its unique design. In conclusion, this ball does not represent New Balance. The price is not justified in any way, you're basically paying for the New Balance logo. Next, we have a relatively cheap FIFA Pro match ball from a less known brand, the Sandico Venata. Sandico sells really cheap sports gear, I suggest you check them out on Sports Direct. I think that Sports Direct and the Sandico website might be the only two places you could buy this ball from. I paid just 30 US dollars, unlike the more expensive balls it comes deflated in a plastic bag. It takes a while to inflate it and because of this, you see some creases. Not a big deal, but I prefer match balls to be shipped inflated. It just helps it preserve its spherical shape. Design wise, it reminds me of an old Puma MLS ball used in 2005. It's made out of 18 hand stitched panels, which gives it a very retro look. It has these marks in black, gray, red, and sky blue. Not the best graphic, but at this price, it's acceptable. The weight is average, similar to a lot of Nike balls. Now, in terms of feel and performance, this ball does really well for this price. For an 18 panel design, it has decent accuracy and roundness. I use it in two indoor league games on artificial grass and no one complained about it. The grip and padding are decent. The padding is very similar to the one on the Nike Ordem, which once again, is not a bad thing for this price. The build quality is good, I don't see anything wrong with the stitching. The only thing that I feel is different from other match balls is the way it bounces. It feels a bit inconsistent. I guess a lot of this has to do with the old 18 panel design. It's not very noticeable and doesn't affect performance that much. It just feels different from a ball that has hexagons and pentagons as panels. This is only at heights above one foot. The way it rolls onto the ground seems to be very normal. In conclusion, if you want a match ball that has a retro feel to it and doesn't cost much, then this is definitely something to consider. The materials and stitching feel very premium and the overall build quality is way above for its price. I recommend this to Amateurs that want the very cheap ball that can still perform well. Next, we have the Yako Performance 
It's used in England's fifth tier called the Vanarama National League, the Russian Second Division, and a few other lower leagues in Europe. It comes in a few colorways. The one I have here is the one used in Russia's second division and it has this navy contour with a big lava orange center. It has two types of hand stitch panels inspired by a Star Wars droid. It's definitely one of my favorite designs on a match ball. In terms of feel and performance, this is a very unique ball. If you're the guy who likes to shoot with the inside of your foot and is afraid of putting too much spin, then this is the ball for you. Out of these, out of all of these balls, this is the hardest to bend, ideal for straight shots and chip shots. The weight is average, a bit heavier than the Telstar and Finale, but still lighter, lighter than the Mitra Delta. Two things I don't like about this ball is that it's a bit hard and the grip does not work well. It's very slippery when it rains. I think that at this price there are better options, but if you're a collector or you're looking for a fun ball to kick with a really cool Star Wars like design, then this might be something to consider. Next we have the Molten Europa League. This is the only brand in my review that is not European or American. It is used in the Asian Cup and the Japan's Emperor's Cup as far as I know. Very interesting design. You have these bright yellow ribbons that are also present on the Europa League branding this year. Very interesting and cool design in my opinion. This ball is made out of 32 panels that are bonded together. It has a dimple texture very similar to the Select Brillant TB Derby Star Bundesliga and Puma Final Statement 1. Now in terms of feel and performance, this match ball feels like the Adidas Telstar. By the sound of kicking it, you can tell that the bladder is not separated from the rest of the ball. However, this ball goes considerably further in goal kicks. Unlike the Adidas Telstar and Finale, this ball can easily be kicked over 60 yards. When I used it in a game, it felt very accurate and reliable. My only complaint is the grip. I'm not a big fan of the dimple texture on any brand. In terms of design, this ball is very similar to the Select Brillant Super TB. But when it comes to performance, it feels faster and goes farther distance in goal kicks. I recommend this ball to both amateurs and professionals. I am glad that Molten has become the official match ball of the Europa League. I feel that Adidas did not bring anything new lately. I never used a Japanese match ball before and now that I have I feel quite impressed by the quality and the way it performs. So this was a little bit about some of the most popular match balls available right now. I'm sure there are other popular brands that I've missed. Hopefully I'll get to review them individually. Now, to sum it all up, if you want something that is fast and goes far, I'd recommend something like the Under Armour Desafio, Mitra Delta Legend, Umbro Neo Pro, Molten Europa League, Wilson NCAA, Nike Merlin, and Derby Star Bundesliga. I was able to kick all of these match balls over 60 yards. If you play on small indoor fields and want something reliable and light, then I will go for something like the Adidas Finale or Telstar. If you want something reliable that would enable you to, kick, to take accurate shots more often, then I'll go for the Nike Insight, Under Armour Desafio, Molten Europa League and Darby Star. Once again, in my opinion, I think that the classic design with 32 hand stitch panels is still the best. If I were to make the top 5 of my favorite match balls, then the Molten Europa League would be 5th, the Adidas Finale would be 4th, the Derby Star Bundesliga would be 3rd, the Under Armour Desafio would be 2nd, and the winner would be the Nike Insight. In my opinion, this is the best official match ball ever made. It has everything you need. It's light, fast, goes long distances, and has just the right amount of grip. That's something hard to find nowadays. Some balls lack in grip and others have a bit too much, which makes it difficult when playing on artificial grass. If you want the Nike Insight, get it while you can on eBay. So yes guys, this is the end of my review 
Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Sorry for the long break. I hope to be making more videos from now on. See you next time.